Hello, welcome to Dr. Nakamura's lecture series on bridge engineering. I am Shunichi Nakamura, Vice President of IABSC and Professor Emeritus of Toka University. I was educated at Kyoto University for my bachelor and master degrees and Imperial College London for my PhD. I worked for Nippon Steel Corporation as a structural engineer for 21 years. I was engaged in design and construction of bridges, including the Trans Tokyo Bay Bridge and the Akashi Kakyo Bridge, this photo, which is the world's longest suspension bridge. After the Akashi Bridge, I moved to Toka University, where I teach structural analysis bridge engineering, and structural dynamics. This lecture series of bridge engineering is for students and young engineers who first learn bridge engineering. It consists of 12 chapters which are presented in 12 lectures. Chapter 1 through 5 are basics of bridge engineering such as types of bridges, design laws, materials, and design method. Chapter 6 through 12 present structural forms and designs of plate girder bridge, composite bridge, truss bridge, arch bridge, suspension bridge, and cable stayed bridge. My lectures are based on my textbook which is available from Amazon, paperback and Kindle. This would help you understand my lectures. Chapter 1 Introduction First question, what is a bridge? It is not easy to answer, but its definition can be a slender structure which overpasses the spacious obstacles, such as rivers and roads, so that people and vehicles can move on it. What should be considered to build a bridge? The most important requirement for a bridge is its safety. People may lose their lives if a bridge collapses under any condition. How to design and build a safe bridge? First, you must understand the kinds and intensity of external forces, which is called design laws, and also its probability of occurrence. In other words, what kind of laws exist, how strong they are, and how often they occur. Second, you must know the strength of materials and members which consists of a bridge, how much resistance they have. Third, you must know how to judge if a bridge is safe. You must understand the design method or verification method. Are there more requirements? Yes. A bridge should be not only safe but also comfortable for users and society. People may feel uncomfortable if a bridge is vibrating when they walk. Residents near a bridge may feel uncomfortable if a bridge does not look nice or look dirty. Its aesthetic is also important. This is called serviceability. Also, bridges must be durable, environmentally friendly, can be recycled. This is called sustainability. 1.2. Bridge system. Typical bridge system is illustrated here. Pedestrians and vehicles move on the deck, which is supported by the girder. The girder is supported at the bearings and their reactions are transferred to the piers at the middle 
and the abutments at the ends, which are supported by the ground. The pier needs a foundation at the base. The distance between the bearings are called span lengths, and the bridge length is the total length of a bridge. When a bridge is supported by more than two piers, the middle part is called center span, and the end part is called side span. The height between the garda bottom and the water level is called clearance, which is decided so that uh, ships can go through. 1.3 Types of Bridges There are many bridges in the world. They can be classified by the three ways. They are classified by materials, such as steel, concrete, timber, or stone. They are classified by structural forms, such as the gutter bridge, truss bridge, arch bridge, or suspension bridge. They are classified by purpose of use, such as pedestrian bridge, road bridge, or railway bridge. Let's look at the classification of bridges by materials. The bridges made by stone, timber, steel and iron, and concrete. First, stone bridges. This is Pont du Gard in France, built in BC 19. It's a very old bridge, but exists even now. This is Segovia Aqua Bridge in Spain. It's also very old, gigantic, and beautiful. Second, timber bridge. This is the Togetsukyo Bridge in Kyoto. It's very beautiful, but unfortunately, timber bridges do not last long. This is a covered bridge with a roof. I found this bridge when I attended the International Conference in Canada. It's an interesting structure. 3. Bridges made of steel or iron. Steel is the major material for modern bridges. In the early days, iron was used. This is the first metal bridge, the Iron Bridge in UK. 4. Concrete bridges. Concrete is also the major material for modern bridges. There are two kinds of concrete bridges. Reinforced concrete bridge, RC, which was developed in France. Another one is pressed rest concrete bridge, PC, invented by Fresne in 1928. This is a PC bridge in Switzerland. 5. What is steel and iron? Pure iron is not strong enough by itself, but it becomes very strong when carbon is added. It's called cast iron, which is strong but brittle. It's a difficult material to handle. In particular, connection of bridge members needs special devices. The iron bridge in UK is, of course, made of iron. As for steel, a new technology, Bessemer converter, was invented and carbon amount can be controlled, which makes it strong and ductile. This is steel. Steel becomes the major material for modern bridges because of its superb mechanical property and also mass production is possible. Ease Bridge, Eiffel Tower, and Force Railway Bridge are examples of the early steel structures. Next, let us classify bridges with the structural forms. First, Gerda Bridge. Steel girder bridges with eye section or a box section are called plate girder bridge. 
the applicable span length is 20 to 250 meters. Cross section of A is used for RC girder. B is a plate girder with I section. C is a steel box girder. This shows a mechanism of a girder bridge. The girder is supported at both ends. When vehicles run on the bridge, the girder deflects and resists bending moments and shear forces caused by the vehicles. The girder is designed not to break nor deflect too much. Here are examples of the girder bridge. A is a typical plate girder bridge. B is a PC girder bridge with a T section. C is a steel box girder bridge. This is the Trans Tokyo Bay Aqualine Bridge. I was one of the main designers of this bridge. Other examples of the gutter bridges. A is a PC box gutter bridge in Switzerland. B is a timber gutter bridge, Togetsuko. Two, truss bridge. The structure consisting of triangles is called truss. The applicable span length of the truss bridges is about 50 to 550 meters. This is the Minato Bridge in Osaka. The span is 510 meters, built in 1970. This shows the mechanism of the truss. Suppose you are in a train which suddenly stops. You easily lose your balance even if you hold a suspender. However, if you hold two suspenders like this, you can keep your balance. Look at the shape of two suspenders. It's a triangle. This is the secret of the truss structure. Tensile and compressive axial forces occur in truss members. Here are examples of truss bridges. There are many types of truss bridges. A is the most common type, called Warren truss bridge. B is a false railway bridge, the cantilever truss bridge. C is a Tokyo Gate Bridge, which has a unique structural form. 3. Arch Bridge The main member of the arch bridge has a shape of semicircle, parabola, ellipse, or catenary. The arch member is fixed at the both ends. The applicable span length is about 50 to 500 uh, 50 meters. When it is loaded like this, the arch is pushed down and the compression forces occur. It is subjected to compressive axial force and also bending moment depending on the load pattern. Two examples of old arch bridges. A is Pont du Gard, B is Segovia Aqua Bridge. Both very old but firmly exist. These are examples of steel arch bridges. A is a Sydney Harbour Bridge. B is a Ponte Maria Pier in Porto, Portugal, which was designed by Gustav Eiffel, designer of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. 4. Rigid Frame Bridge As shown in A, the gutter and the columns are rigidly connected. B consists of continuous rigid frames, 
called Firendir Bridge. This is the Toyomi Bridge in Tokyo. 5. Suspension Bridge The suspension bridge is ideal for long span bridges. The applicable span length is about 100 meters to 2,000 meters. The Akashi Kaikyo Bridge is currently the world's longest bridge with a main span of 1991 meters. I was in charge of the cable work of this bridge. Suspension bridge consists of girder, cable, hanger, tower, and anchorage. The girder is suspended by the cable through the hangers as shown in A. When the girder is loaded like this, cable lifts up the girder. The cable goes up to the tower top and rests at the anchorage. Therefore, the cable and the hanger is subjected to tension, the girder bending moment, the tower axial compression and bending, and the anchorage is subjected to uplift and slide force induced by the cables. These are examples of suspension bridges. A is a chain bridge in Budapest, Hungary. B is the Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco, USA. It's a beautiful bridge, my favorite. 6. Cable State Bridge. It's also suitable for long span bridges. The applicable span lengths can be up to 1100 meters. This is the Tatara Bridge in Japan with a main span of 890 meters. Cable State Bridge consists of the Garda, Cable, and the Tower. The Garda is suspended by the State Cables as shown here. When the Garda is loaded like this, the State Cables lift up the Garda. Therefore, the state cable is subjected to tension, the girder axial compression and bending moment, and the tower axial compression and bending moment. The Albert Bridge is the first cable state bridge in the world, built in 1874 UK. It has a combined form of the cable state and suspension bridge. B is the Yokohama Bay Bridge, a typical modern cable state bridge. That's all for this lecture. See you next lecture.